Hi guys, uh, Razor here. Uh, today I want to show you my uh, favorite build of the league, um, and that skill is Winter Orb. I uh, started off the Gladiator, which uh, most people did with Bleed. Um, I uh, leveled with uh, uh, Earth Shatter and so on, and then went into Eviscerate, which was awesome. Like basically one cycle bosses, um, and then I changed it to a bit of a flicker action with the Eviscerate, so flickering around. But um, yeah, when I build up some currency, I wanted to play Winter Orb again, and I and I saw, uh, especially on Warden with the buffs it got and the change in ascendancy, it should work pretty well, because most of these damage nodes work with Winter Orb. So obviously the freeze should give us uh, almost permanent freeze, and we do. You'll see, um, we'll run a map now. How I've run it with uh, a delirium and everything on. Uh, even when you get to the the map boss, you, you sometimes it's just stuck in the air for the whole fight, basically. Um, it's awesome and a lot of freeze on bosses too like shaper is so slow um, but yeah also of course avatar of wilds is a massive single target boost so you can press this kind of a damage button every time you get to a tough evening and um, the ignite uh, gets changed to scorch which is also more uh, elemental damage taken and then actually oath of spring is also pretty nice because winter orb like in my setup i've got eight projectiles and then with the uh, dying sun i've got ten um, my car speed is I think like 5, 5.32 a second, so you're talking about 50 projectiles a second. So that can stack up this uh, 50 shocks uh, pretty quickly, you know, almost instantly really. I saw on big bosses I get normally between 30 and 40 percent shocks, so not all your projectiles will hit depending on the, the box of the, the boss. The bigger the boss, um, the DPS just goes through the roof, so I can maybe on a big heat box get 32 to 35 million DPS and then obviously on a smaller boss maybe only 10. So it all depends when the is a bit like that, how you overlap and so on. Um, so yeah, let me uh, quickly run through the map first. Um, this has basically been my strategy. Not, you know, I'm not massive invest, you know, I've, Dad Gamer has got a, like I have to use my time spiritually, but I normally like to generate my maps at the top and then uh, Scarabs, strong boxes, um, Shrines, well, almost a standard start after you got your, your map and, and finish your Atlas. I did all the bosses, everything myself with Gladiator and I did everything with Winter Orb as well. Um, all the bosses too. Um, so yeah, I put on daily 40 to 60 daily, and then um, six mod, seven mod doesn't matter as long as it doesn't have uh, no regen, no leech, and elemental reflect. I try to avoid crit because I'm not really crit immune. I didn't get a the uber expensive corrupt, but I've got life and reduce area damage on on the swallow. And uh, then three scarabs for extra div drops because um, I did scour over Apothecary to Jungle Valley. And then shrines, shrines, ambush, uh, and, uh, and extra maps from the bosses is to sustain and bossing. Did a lot of boss cycles to, to make some money and sell jewels and that kind of thing. So um, in the mapping setup, we're using a headhunter. So I do have a headhunter and then I use a rot cut because he generates uh, frenzy charges and you know, I get onslaught and all that stuff so it's nice and then on bosses I swap in bottled faith and also then the arms anguish because uh, yeah headhunter doesn't help you on bosses and the arms gives me the brutal charges which we have to generate in a way which I then do with enduring cry we don't have to do it while mapping but enduring cry and enduring composure helps me get uh, get them up um, yeah, and then basically permanent RF as well, as long as there's not too many less generation things going on. So I think I'll run through first and then uh, we can do the loot loot stuff afterwards, maybe pick up if, if something nice drops. Um, well, we got a Kosens here actually. Um, so there I can put Avatar of the Veil on. So, for this DPS, pretty nice, pretty nice. I mean, it's a... Uh, 40 daily map. Wind Orb isn't the most uber of single target, so I think that's very, very, uh, very, very good. The advantage here of this skill is obviously the map clear, and it's basically just a one button bolt. You will, uh, I just shield charge around, flame dash, and you just keep your right click in so that you try to have the, the max channeling of Wind Orb. You kind of almost start the skip. You jump, you stand still. You charge, you st just stand still where you land. Don't, don't like move like this the whole time, otherwise it doesn't charge. So just jump in, wait there a bit, make another shrine. And for the most part, you don't have to do anything else. Very comfortable to farm like this. You just sit back, have something in the background. And for old hands, you know, when you're 40 already, you don't want to click a million times. 
really enjoy the skill. The nice thing also is we can do all the self-targeting, so you don't even have to target. There's a reason why a lot of people love it. Uh, I'm missing a shrine somewhere, yeah. I yet have to drop an apothecary though. Um, been doing a lot of these maps, but uh, not quite been lucky with that. But I've made a good amount of money, um, so I can't can't complain. Seven years bad luck and some other things that dropped. I mean, you know, got another boss here, and he's just absolutely melting. You see, as soon as you press that button, it's all over for them. Did I drop something interesting? I'm actually going I'm going so much quicker there, there's a fracture maybe. Than I would normally do. I'm always like a someone that likes to just click click and pick up pick up pick up my loot. I don't like actually leaving stuff behind. And we go to the boss. I didn't get one shrine there. I wonder did I have Maven on because I'm actually running green altars. And I didn't get one run shrine. And yeah, the one thing about Winter Orb you see there is it will go target small other enemies. So sometimes you lose a little bit of damage. Oh, here was a second boss actually. But you saw when, when all of them go to hit them, it's actually very good damage in my opinion. It's way more than you need just to map. And um, yeah, uh, Elder, Shaper, Uber, Elder, kill them, Maven, kill them very, very easily. Um, absolutely no complaints. I did try two Ubers. I did try Uber Cirrus, but to, to just say that I've never done Ubers myself. Um, so I don't really know the mechanics that well, and it's a lot quicker. Uh, I got Shaper about halfway, and I got Cirrus halfway, and there's just way too crazy shit happening all around, and especially Cirrus was just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to do that uh, a couple of times. But I think this build will be able to get there, but it doesn't quite have that uber DPS where you just want to like cycle a boss quickly and not make the fight go on 10 minutes or longer, you know, because then you're just fighting against the mechanics the whole time. Um, but for what this build is made to do, all the normal bosses get through the whole game and basically farm maps, farm anything you want. Um, you can do Delirium, I can do Simulacrum constantly, level 13, 14, which is fine, and then you can go out. So I did about, uh, I think, 8 to 10 Simulacrum runs in one day as well to test it. Um, no three passive voices, no. <laughs> no luck on that. Uh, I'm actually full. Let's put down some of this junk. Uh, so there was one with a fracture. No. Uh, let's pick up that. What was that? Uh, no. Um, I'm not really specced into Simulacrum, so I'm not dropping that many splinters. It's more just to get more monsters on the map. You know, I'm trying to just do to beef the scarabs into divinations and uh, trying to just drop items. I should probably uh, is that worth something? Probably not uh, in the league. PC. Um, I should probably go a lot more into rarity if I want to drop the card, but um, yeah, I uh, don't really want to change anything. I, I'm not someone that likes it much to do the same thing for two weeks in a row, so I kind of farm a strategy and then I, I boss for a day or two and see what money I can make, and uh, then I might run whatever legions or something else, uh, respect the tree if I want to. But this has been the strategy of. of I've done the most time and most of the money have come from this jungle valley running um, and uh, also doing bosses. I farmed Cirrus a lot, uh, probably did 50 plus Cirruses to sell currency and whatever he was dropping. For some reason he never dropped me a, a thread of hope which is strange, it seems so 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 rare at this stage. Um, yeah, so I also went through and uh, grabbed 36 challenges with this build, uh, did most of it myself. Uh, that uh, dual uh, nemesis and usurpers um, they were 100 and obviously 98 to 100 was just legion sitting back and watching Netflix but okay so let's start with the gear I use the Minarius um, very 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 difficult if you're on this side of the tree basically 
here so either bottom or right i played a champion spellcaster last season so i dual wield them as well because the thing is and, and this kind of part from from here till here you get zero spell damage scaling so to get it flat you know 200 increased spell damage uh, here is massive and then obviously if you're crit build uh, against single target there's not match that beats 246 increase uh, sorry 100 percent crit strike multiplier you know uh, and especially for winter orb you got 30 percent increased area of effect too so uh, extremely difficult to, to beat this almost impossible on this side of the tree like if you're the occultist or something like that and you're near the aoe nodes here on the left where inquisitor is or in the center where witch is and there's aoe somewhere here too uh well yeah maybe you can do it but i mean if you have twin of them that's 60. and with a specific setup with this weapon the vast power we have on the one increased uh, area node so that one with vast power and i've got twin magnifiers but this one's a crit node so it's a crit cluster i wanted the second one but i didn't go for it so a crit cluster with we get away magnifier magnifier vast power we exactly get just over 2.2 meter um, area so it exactly puts me into the next frame where my winter orbs can can overlap and then taming uh, one of the best rings you can probably uh, craft a or try to get a plus one frenzy ring that might beat it but i do a lot of ailments i do chill freeze scorch shock that's at least four you know so a lot of increase in the mental damage which again is the same as spell damage so uh, very strong because we can't really scale it on the tree on this side um standard like i'm stacking frenzies not endurance like our uh, slayer would um but this is basin slot chest and then obviously you can try to uh, fetch a plus two or, or, or plus four i've got a plus four here which uh, i only paid nine divine for it i think it was a fucking steal but one of the things is that winter orb actually scales the duration too so there's a lot of skills that don't want duration so it's actually cheaper so you can get a duration projector or duration aoe uh, for cheaper um, uh, and that's a bit of an advantage um, so that's nice that puts your and and, and uh, taking wind orb from 21 to 25 almost doubles the base damage of wind orb so this is actually quite a massive upgrade um, we have winter orb infused channeling awaken greater multiple projectiles which i dropped myself uh, from uh, doing a couple of maven farms and uh, increased critical damage support, uh, ice bite of course, and inspiration. Uh, and yes, your shield charge, flesh and stone, faster attacks. Helmet is a heat shiver, and when you have money, look for plus one max power charge. Um, at the moment, I'm sitting on uh, seven frenzy, so that means seven endurance as well, and then five power charges. Uh, grab that one there, get the three and the one on the helmet. Uh, not, I mean, it's helmet, basically based in slot, everyone knows it if you do elemental. Uh, then we use a replica bad of the brotherhood, um, brotherhood. Um, and not the normal one because we are not endurance stacking so i want my maximum endurance to be equal to my maximum frenzy so i'm stacking frenzy charges and then getting the same endurance charges and of course the, his partner is relicacious impatience which always keeps at that maximum charges you do like i said when you use single target you use arms anguish you need to use your enduring cry yourself and um uh, or if you get hit the enduring composure small cluster will help then headhunter or that one swap out like i said the flasks and then the one item you can craft that would be expensive but i i for a long time used a, a alva temple glove that i got myself and crafted with the i think it's 50 percent increased critical strike chance against shocked enemies and then i also crafted this crit and elemental damage on it, it was a nice nice thing but then I bought this base, so you can either try to slam or Lord slam it yourself, or lock suffixes and slam. You can roll, cannot roll attack, but uh, there it's, it's very low chance to roll. So a cheaper way is try to find the plus one max frenzy one that has open suffixes and prefixes, and then you can craft it further. So that's what I did, and I needed to get the double race on the glove because um, you're quite resistant staff when you have so many uniques in the build. But standing in town, you can see I am race gap 79, 88, 88, and 77 chaos. I'll explain how I get that. Then block, we are 55, 50, but remember we're lucky. So that's about 78, 75 block, which as you saw, I hardly ever take damage ever. Um, but yeah, so try to get this. I just uh, locked, so I cannot roll attack. I slammed, I hit the, uh, I think, cold race, and then I swapped the races around to have fire lightning. And then the uh, open suffix, I crafted the crit and the elemental damage. Um, this one incidentally also got on the prefix the warlords increased spell damage which is actually quite nice another 19 percent damage there 
Um, flasks, uh, you need to want to have remove burning because I'm using uh, RF. So sometimes you hit maps with less recovery, you get cursed or you have less max resistance. Then I can't sustain RF very well and then I just put it off. It's like you can see there, 40% damage loss, but we got so much damage and with hit under mapping, uh, you don't really feel it that much. Um, uh, this ring I got actually on my Gladiator. Uh, fucking insane drop early in the league. Uh, when I got it, I knew I was going to play Winter Orb. Um, what did I do with this ring? Uh, I think I got, I did have the suffixes. What did I do? Oh, it hit the three suffixes, so it dropped with the Frostbite on hit, the Chaos Race, and the Lightning Resistance. And it had whatever prefix, but it had open prefix. So I rolled uh, suffixes cannot be changed. And then I went to harvest and re-rolled life. And I hit T2 life. And I opened prefix, which was stunning. Because then I could just put the channeling skills on. So uh, this cost me two dev to lock. Once re-roll, it's done. Uh, the evasion is maybe a dead mod. But the rest, it's it's insane for, for what I need. Um, and then I just uh, catalyst it up further. Um, now I can actually get a better one and I can still get a corruption on here, but uh, the build is, is, is strong enough. Passive tree are leveled with creeping frost. Um, you can level however you want, you know, went through here at the top and take some crit, take a lot of the nodes here. I, I'm not gonna make leveling trees or explain, like you just generically, whatever. You can even level with bows. You're gonna do basically the same thing um, with your tree. Come to the outside, take the crit nodes, you would maybe take the bow nodes, but it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, we've got a supreme ostentation and because we're in this area we don't really have int we, we struggle with strength uh, there's no real other way except if you maybe use as fermentus but that's super weak in this build because we're stacking the charges and so you can look for one which got a good mod i've got internal uh, exploitation here which is increased damage per power charge so that's another 50 percent increased damage there's nice ones like uh, uh suppress uh, i think there's like where's one Lightning resistance, yeah, 80% increased spell crit, another 80% crit, but yeah, uh, like you have to travel a bit far. I think I used this one for a while until I got better crit and then I despec these uh, these three points. And then we just move out and we take health, we take the charges. You want one uh, uh, jewel, obviously corrupted blood, um, something you want, but you do want one with lightning damage to spell. So mine's got life to crit multi we want, lightning damage, corrupted blood, critical strike chance great jewel uh, this was also a steel uh, i think it was less than 100 c whatever but um yeah the lightning damage is spells you need so that you can proc your your oath of spring so you do need uh, even just five you just need some added lightning damage um because of this it doesn't matter anymore how big the heat it it just matters how many times you can hit per second um then uh, we got a large ink, uh, cluster and here we've got to Yarni's lesson for survivability we want leech so elemental damage leech as life this is a must have to feel good just top up your health so quickly with so many projectiles you've got and then inspired oppression this is this, there's only two ones where you can get to a Yarni uh, here like in the front like this with a useful one so this one is great because we shock we freeze we want increased effect of ailments because we're actually scaling it there's two very important nodes for that I'll show you now. So it's this one, increased effect of damaging ailments when you crit, we always crit. And then enemies permanently take 5% increased damage for each second they've been frozen to you. So the greater infect, the more they freeze, the longer they freeze, the more damage you do. Very, very, very good. Basically the bolt scales a lot with that, together with heat shiver. Um, at the back you have snowstorm, so you want that. You want Oyani inspired snowstorm. There's one other one, but it's super, super expensive because this is also a very good note here. Um, this was the one and i checked every combination this is the price wise the best one you can go for uh, then we've got our crit one with our enduring composure and then a watch's eye so you want uh, i've got a precision hatred one so crit multi with precision i'll go for that first and then look for penetration hatred um, you can obviously go double precision hatred or double hatred precision but i would say definitely take precision then this penetration and then if you have money check what the third mod is um, then we just go down we take the crit nodes take suppression take some survivalist here you can actually take 100 percent increase evasion from body armor not the bad mod while mapping uh here we've got impossible escape um which i allocate uh, ghost reaver with for all this crit here especially this doom cost 60 percent increase spell crit. Uh, you can't like there's no one jewel you're gonna get that just even gives you this so then we add another 20 crit multi and more crit chance i'm i'm not like when I'm mapping, I think I'm basically crit cap, but on bosses, I'm probably in the 80% because then it doesn't proc this 
240 increased crit charge and I've only got five power charges um, if I probably get up to six or something I'll get closer so this this is a shit ton of damage there's almost no node here I can take that's more damage than this doom car so this was also a very cheap way to get a lot of crit multi and and, and a lot of critical strike chance uh, frenzy charges we go on then we take life here we take the increased damage increase effect of uh, cold ailments uh, very important there more spell suppression and of course spell suppression is lucky so you can see my stats I am um, uh, what do you call it race cap and then uh, chaos capped as well the block which is in the 80s so I'm basically block capped uh, I'll explain to you now that uh, my suppression where is that my suppression is 56 this flask is permanently up so uh, which one is it that one 66 but it's lucky so I'm here in the 90s so most spells is suppressed um, then we got a jewel here at the bottom and uh, I wanted a two socket one so the thing is you can go for another one like this but it's expensive and I didn't find one on trade but uh, we do do part of our damage is fire so you can take a fire one which is what I did and that gives you the advantage to go for cremator which means ignited enemies killed by hits are destroyed uh, which I'm just thinking now doesn't work because we don't ignite we only scorch so fuck that just see if you can get it or one not only one but at least this we do scale some fire damage as well so it's not completely useless and prismatic art is important because we do need some resistance as you can see I'm, I'm, I'm only just over on fire because I'm using headhunter if I'm using the arms anguish then I'm fine you know 134 um, but yeah yeah you got some options but anyway so you have got my forbidden fleshes in which is uh, endless munitions so we steal the two prods uh, uh, from the ranger tree um, which takes us wind orb as one uh, awakened has got five that's six so we got eight eight projectiles and when this is up we got ten uh, dying sun so this is a very 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 good and it's not too expensive man it was like less than tender for both jewels um, then we take some block nodes here, increase spell block, and then here it's a little tick. Uh, a lot of people have used it, but it's for chaos resistance. Uh, I farmed also like 20, 30 kings, dropped this myself. I dropped like energy shield one and sold it. I made like a money of him. Um, so yeah, you take the frenzies. You don't need to take this because you're not scaling max endurance. You're scaling max frenzy, and that uh, the badge makes it equal to your frenzies. So yeah, this basically solves all our... our chaos it gives me chaos absolutely every, everywhere I've taken a node um, probably 10 12 thefts this jewel and then we take the block here and here we take the 30% chance to avoid stun so this is what helps me get stun immune and then we tattoo seven tattoos of avoid stun so you can see the other advantage of going supreme ostentation is we completely tat it out you know <laughs> tattoo everywhere so we got chaos race here which makes us cap then I've got seven of these can't be stunned together with the mastery I'm stun immune and then I've got a whole pile of increased cold increased cold increased cold we're doing cold increased cold and there's one strength node has got a fire is here which was also important um, I think that is all of them there's not another tattoo that I'm sneaking in no, no that's all of them and then obviously charging so we get that's why when mapping we get charges um, it's just bosses we need to use in during cry um, Amani you need the reservation there and then oh, obviously the anoint is uh, sovereignty because um, we do need the, the 12 reservation to fit all the auras in um, I don't think I went over the aura so the auras are precision arctic armor because we stand still most of the time less damage immunity to freeze we need clarity level 5 was like the perfect spot where I do not run out of mana um, I can, maybe I can bump it down but no 5 is fine enduring cry then we got righteous fire that's just for the spell damage oh and I got culling strike on my floss pink so air of ice steel skin automation more duration so that's just an extra shield that's basically orderly cast and also makes me immune to bleeding that's why i take care of that and then here's a mastery that helps take care of the poison uh, poison immunity so i'm poison immune i'm bleed immune i'm stun immune frozen shock immune because we're using tempest shield where is that there's tempest shield in the swollen because at the cost when i block is uh, creeping frost bone chill and frost bomb so we get our exposure there and then uh, the creeping frost the chilling areas uh, and bone chill makes the enemy take more cold damage so this is a big dps boost actually against single target um i think that is that um we are not all ailment immune so we can get brittle we can get scorched ourselves but it's not much of an issue it's like i'm, I'm not also not basically didn't really farm some arachnums but for the most part 
we are absolutely fine um, let's put this away yeah I think that is everything um, I just started to do a SSF run I'm like in between what I want to play and I farmed you know and I don't quite want to play another game the game is so fun so I thought now let's see if I can do four stone on SSF I've gotten to like level 80 plus on gauntlet but so I can I, I think I know enough to play with SSF but just to see the journey and value everything a lot more you know you, you just go and go buy it kind of drops feel good so I think I'm next six or seven now I'm playing um, uh, chieftain I was like uh, playing around I saw a video about um, uh, consecrated path of endurance but I really wanted to do like melee ignite you know big chunky hit I thought that could be fun if I can dash and ignite it's massive AOE but the base damage is a bit low for ignite so I played around with earthquake and I find it good I mean the explosions it hits it hits the ignite so hard so I don't know if I'll get somewhere but at the moment the campaign I dropped a, a nice weapon uh, through essence on benchcraft it was a five link so put a lot of damage in the campaign at least and of course the chieftain explosions just carries the whole screen um, so I'll see how that goes and craft myself up and have a bit of in league fun in a SSF environment um, maybe i'll give it a go again depending how the time is um, i do tend to like to just play the trade at the start it gives me access to all the fun things i want to do because uh, you know sometimes i can only play one two three hours a day sometimes not even every day but yeah guys i hope you had a, had a great time um winter orb is just oh it feels amazing um it's something i'll definitely play again i've played it i think twice now fully and the other one i also love is blade vortex but i just like winter orb even more and this might be a starter option as well like I know there's expensive stuff here but if you forget about the bosses and you just want to do t16 mapping what I did at the start to be cheap is you put the inspired learning here and then you buy a replica headhunter which is like four diff so this costs you about five diff for that combo and you very not like I have half the effect but you still get the headhunter effect on the two sides there um, which makes that mapping much easier and it's you know a much much cheaper investment at the start a budget way to set up a mapping character replica headhunter inspired learning here um, and with that I just farmed these 16s the whole time you know this feels obviously smoother now but that's way strong enough to do that on, on a shoestring budget I didn't even have the plus four yet um, so there might be a possibility that you want to do a mapping start that you can just go straight into this all freeze the winter orb uh, you obviously use bad clusters at the start but as you get money you get better ones um, but the basis is really here to, to do that um, at the start when I didn't have this I also just used the amethyst flask and I had like chaos on my glove you must just roll the glove for the right resistances then and you can get up to 50% you know fairly comfortably which is really enough um, but yeah hope you guys have uh, fun in the league um, and find some interesting bolts you can try out and uh, I'll see you later